a freeze or, or, or be too hot. So I'll photograph what I can, make a few color notes, do a little bit of a drawing, and back home to my comfortable studio to, to lay out my painting and my design. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So when you're, when you're trying to come up with a new idea for a new piece, what inspires you? And what is it that you, is it just you literally go out and see something that's beautiful and you just stop right there and paint it? Or do you think about it a while? No, very little thought is involved in the process. Okay. It's an immediate gut reaction. I can be driving down Montgomery and take a look at the sky and the, the sun is gonna be a certain way and the clouds are gonna be a certain way and I have gotten many people honking behind me because I've been hanging out the window with my <laughs> camera trying to shoot the sky. So it's it's very spontaneous. Sometimes it is kind of a um, um, something that I think about. I'll, I'll look at an image and okay. plan it out and figure out do I want to do the whole image? Do I want to do a piece of the image? Do I want to zoom in and get a little more intimate and show a tiny little corner of the image? So there is some thought involved, but after that, there's no more thought involved. It's all, it's pure feeling. It's just what I see, what I feel, and what I, what I want to go on. So I know that obviously you're in Wayne's Gallery, but are there other states or countries that you're in as well where you sell your art? I have um, a media agent who handles my work in um, coastal China, in Guangzhou, and okay. I show my work in Hong Kong wow. and Singapore. Wow. So how did that happen? Uh, Facebook. Facebook? <laughs> yeah, I show my work on Facebook, and um, the agency in China contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in uh, being represented by them as um, Unison Pastels, which is one of the largest pastel companies in My the world favorite. also contacted me through uh, Facebook, and I am um, a select member of their organization called AAUC, which is Associated Artists of Unison Color. So wow. in that I use Unison product, um, they felt that my work, because of its color and because of subject matter, it exemplified what they wanted to their, their products to say. So um, my work is, is, is shown in um, England, um, in Ireland. Wow. So world famous right here. Well, I don't know about world famous. Albuquerque, New Mexico, yeah, Wayne's yeah. Gallery, right? Home base. Home there base. You go. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to get off the subject mm -hmm. just a minute. I love your cloud work. Uh, for me, clouds are the hardest thing for me to draw or paint because there's just so much depth to it, mm -hmm. and changes, and getting that form just right. Mm -hmm. Yours are brilliant. Any tips for a struggling artist out there? Um, well, for me, I never draw my clouds. Okay. Um, what, I, what I'll do is I will figure out how much is gonna be sky and how much is gonna be clouds. All right. And I fill in my sky areas. The okay. clouds are left as open space, and then I'll go in and start integrating cloud shapes into the sky and blend sky into clouds, clouds back into sky. And a lot of times I'll wipe out two thirds of what I do yeah. and just leave it that way and then continue on to another part because that wipeout is what I'm looking for. Okay, that's a great tip, awesome. Now was there one particular artist that inspired you to become an artist or what inspired you to become an artist? Um, probably my dad, who's also a painter and a sculptor. Wow. Um, I grew up with it in my house, so from the age of four, when all the kids wanted trucks and toys, I wanted crayons and paint and paper, and um, so it's always been something that I've been attracted to. Um, I've obviously done other things to make money, um, because art doesn't do it all the time. No. It's a it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure, but, um... That's okay. Actually, now, are you self-taught? Did you go to school for this? I went was to school. You went to school? I was BA in Fine Art, Queens College. Queens College, mm -hmm. nice, yeah. nice. I still consider myself self-taught because I basically, like probably many art students, just brushed aside everything that they taught me in school and said, never do this and never do this and you should do this and you should do that. 
And I think my art has gotten to the point that it's gotten to is because I've learned how to break the rules. Okay. And how to do what they told me never to do. I know for what's hard for me is how you know when you're done. How do you know when you're done? You know, it's never been a problem for me. Okay. I walk out of the room, and when I look back at the piece, it either says yes to me or it says no to me. Okay. And it happens every time. I know when I'm not done. Okay. Put it that way. More than, yeah. Okay. When I think I'm done is when I usually walk out of the studio, I'll go downstairs, hang out with the dogs, make some lunch, come back upstairs, and I've almost forgotten about what I've painted. Okay. And I take a quick look out of the corner of my eye, and the first thing I'm going to see is what's wrong. Okay. If I don't see what's wrong, I know I'm finished. Awesome. All right. Well, I know that we're thrilled to have you in the gallery. Well, it's an honor to be here. Absolutely. So let me see about some of the other questions we have. How do you feel uh, the role is in society for artists? And I know that's quickly changing over these times. But what do you what do you feel that where's our place as artists? For me, I feel kind of like a band aid. Okay. I will give you and show you something to divert your ugly train of thought to something beautiful, to something pleasing, Aww. to something relaxing that will take your mind off of whatever we're going through in this world now, whatever you don't want to think about. I will give you something to think about, and what's more, I'll give you something to feel. I like that. I know for me, um, buying this gallery and being part of this gallery is the ultimate high for an artist. I'm surrounded by beauty every day mm -hmm. and incredibly talented artists that I could only hope to be one day. So for me, it's quite inspiring. But most artists work out of studio by themselves. Is, it, is that what you do? Absolutely. And, and does it get a little lonely? What do you do to break the cycle of wanting, I, I, for me, I just want to be in my, my studio painting all the time or drawing or whatever it is. But I know that I have to go to work and do something else so it's easy to get away. But when it is your career, how do you, how do you balance some of the solitude versus getting out there and being part of the community. The painting itself and the process is the company. Okay. I'm not alone. Okay. When I'm in my studio by myself. Or with your dog. With my dogs and with my cat and with my right. music and with my little incense burning, it just kind of puts me in a frame of mind where nothing bothers me and I'm not thinking about anything and I can just let my feelings start to open up and flow. And when I do that, when I'm looking at an image, I start to feel something about that image. And that's okay. where my process will start, is okay. with what I feel. Am I feeling warm? Am I feeling cool? Is it bright? Is it dull? Is it... I try never to paint sad or unhappy or, or a down kind of a feeling, even though it's okay. quite relevant. And I've seen some absolutely beautiful art that's been of a little bit mm, scary nature. But for me, it's, a little dark. It's, it's, it's just to uplift and to show awesome. light and beauty and just to help people move through their day. And I think that's why people like art. I think so too. For the reason that you can be surrounded by that beauty and it's constant and you can hang it up on your wall. Or the feeling you that can it look evokes. At it. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Um, people always ask me about um, the art in this gallery and what I own or whatever. Well, I just bought the gallery, so I don't own a whole lot. But I have to say, I'm, I'm always going around telling everybody, ooh, I want one of those. Ooh, I hope I can get one of those one day. Because uh, for me, right now, I'm concentrating on the gallery, but the art that is in here, and especially yours, is just, with me learning pastels right now, and I do, I just got my first set of you. Oh, so good. Uh, they're very a little pricey good. for me, yes, they and are. I'm not very good, so yeah, I'm really stingy with what I'm using them. I try to use some of the cheaper brands and let me give you but a little the quality clue. Is, is no different. Don't you know, be me, stingy. No different. Don't be stingy and use the best because when you're not yeah. using the best, mm -hmm. no matter how hard you try, the results won't be the best. Mm -hmm. So you have to be using top quality so when you hit that mark, yes. your materials let you know you've hit the mark. Well I definitely could tell the quality in in the the hue and the density of the color Absolutely. and the brightness of the Absolutely. color. Um, what do you paint on? Do you paint on paper, on board? 
I paint on um, a variety of things. Um, okay. My main surface is a sanded paper, which feels like if you've ever filed your nails with an emery board, yeah. there are different degrees of that, what we call grit, okay. that's laid onto a sheet of paper. And the higher the number, the finer the grit. I paint on a four to a 500 grit surface okay. for most of these pieces. However, some of them are done on um, archival masonite. Okay. which is sanded yeah. down and I have a recipe that I use in my studio that I paint onto the board that gives me that gritty yeah. textural tooth surface and I'll paint on that. Do you start light and go dark or do you start with dark paper and go light? It depends on the piece I'm painting on. If I'm painting on white paper, my underpaintings are always watercolor paintings. Okay. If I'm painting on dark paper, that is my underpainting, and I'm putting direct color on top of that color. I'm letting that color infuse itself through the entire painting. Let me see if any of them. This one here okay. had a pink and uh, purple underpainting. And oh, when you get up wild. really close to that, all of that pink, misty stuff laying underneath the clouds is not pastel, it's watercolor. Okay. So I let a lot well, of my underpainting show through. through. Sometimes I'll take pastel and do an underpainting and dissolve it with alcohol. Okay. And it just gives you kind of um, a blurry, out of, out of uh, focus kind of an image, which I can then take my pastels and go in and I sharpen up the images that I want to sharpen up. And then let, the, let everything else be okay. kind of quiet and soft in the background. Have you ever used the baby wipes? Oh my god. I have thrown everything onto pastel. I just learned baby wipes, and I was just like, oh my gosh. You know, one of my favorite things. is full of that vodka. I don't, I don't drink. I don't drink, but I have a bottle of vodka in my studio. And for blending? For where do you use water and watercolor? Yeah. I use vodka. Ooh. Now I have a use for my vodka. <laughs> Especially the flavored ones I don't know what to do with. <laughs> They, they just create, in my cabinet. They create different marks on the surface of the yeah. pastel and they make it melt a certain way. Yeah. And I utilize those melts to oh, look that's like so cool. grass or trees or uh, like any of that stuff in yeah, there, all, the those little, all those little marks, that's what that is. Now, other than the pastel itself, mm -hmm. what other tools do you use in your process? Fingers. I know. I have no fingertips. I could rob a bank because I've changed my fingerprints I and know, sand right? so many times. But I use paintbrushes okay. initially. I use um, graphite pencils. I use pastel pencils. I use... Um, pastel pencils go so fast. Well, I Painting. use them only really? for very specific things. Just like fine detail? For very fine detail okay. or for straightening out a line or for yeah. moving something. Because my pastels are kind of thick and square and fat. So I have to kind of yeah. whittle them down a little bit or rub them on some sandpaper to change the shape of them. So when I make my mark on my painting, I get the mark that I'm looking for and not like a straight line that cuts across the image. Oh, that's awesome. All right. How are we doing on time? Five minutes? Okay. All right. Do we have any Q and A's yet? No? Okay, no worries. All right. So, what would be the ultimate compliment someone could give you about your work? They would tell me I saw one of your paintings that it made, and it reminded me of um, a place my mom used to take me when I was a child, or it reminds me of um, just something very personal to them that has nothing to do with the painting that I didn't know was going to remind them of that. If they can find something in my work that reminds them of a good memory in their life or in their past, that's what I say. Try to keep it kind of 
neutralized so you can interject yourself into the painting and see some things in there that you want to see. Well, it was uh, no mistake that I put you first because I'm so in love with pastels. And I, uh, I, you know, I've, I don't know if you know, but I've been learning all the different forms of art and medium types, all of that, um, for the past three years. Mm -hmm. And I've only got encaustics and full welding left. And I saw. Really? I did so also. watercolor and pastels are my favorite. changing all the time. And why do you think that is? Um, because I wanted to. Okay. And I keep looking for um, new ways to express something or a new color palette or a new, not so much a new subject matter because I do love landscape. Mm -hmm. Trees and rivers and roads and skies can be painted in an infinite Absolutely. amount of ways. And to me, I like to try to find, <coughs> excuse me, a perspective or an angle that is not typical, that is not everyday. Um, my color palettes tend to be a little bit different than most uh, traditional landscape painters. Okay. I have no problem with uh, pink trees and red rivers and things like that. So um, it's just letting myself go and experimenting and um, <clears throat> doing what I think is beautiful and what I enjoy. Awesome. Well, I think you got the best job in the world. I do. I think I do too. We've got three minutes left.